Welcome to our EARJ commencement in honor of the class of 2023. I'd ask you to please silence your mobile devices at this time. I'm going to do the same thing. All right. We're going to have a countdown, and then we will have our graduates entering. So I'd ask you now to please stand to welcome the class of 2023.
Thank you. I'm going to ask you first to be seated for just a moment because you've been standing for a while. Thank you very much. That's 73 graduating seniors from the class of 2023. Take a deep breath because now I'm going to ask everyone to please rise for the national anthems of Brazil and the United States. Please rise. Graduates as well. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce Board of Directors Representative Mr. Haul Trejos. Mr. Haul. Good evening. I have been given the pleasure and the honor to welcome and briefly address the graduating class of 2023, their families and friends, as well as the members of the EARJ administration and faculty. I've been serving uh, EARJ as a board member for several years, but my strongest tie with this institution definitely is that I'm a proud EARJ 1982 graduate. The world, the world in which I graduated into was a very different one than what you are graduating into. To start with, there was 3.3 billion people less in the planet. China was not a superpower. Global warming was not an issue. There was no unified Europe. 
The Berlin Wall still stood, but most importantly, our, us students had no Google. However, despite these major differences between then and now, EARJ's purpose has remained solidly the same, to inspire students to strive for excellence, become meaningful leaders in whatever they do, and learn to live a fulfilling life. This class of 2023 is a resourceful and a high achieving group, no doubt. Their prestigious college acceptances all around the globe are an unquestionable proof of this. All of the graduates here today were offered the opportunity of a top-notch education. And a special thank you goes out to the supporting families sitting here today, which made this possible for them. It is rewarding to see how they grasp the opportunity given without hesitation, leaving the, their mark at EARJ's history. This class is the largest graduating class in two decades. There are eight graduates sitting here that have been with EARJ for 14 plus years. Another 14 members have been at EA for over 10 years. And we have, for the first time in EARJ's history, a fourth generation graduate, Gabriel Faru. This is a milestone to be remembered for sure. Before I close, a couple of requests from the board. Keep in touch with your classmates, because for sure you've made long life friends here. Keep in touch with EARJ. Tell us about your achievements and whereabouts. And finally, be good people. It's possible to do well in life and to do good at the same time. So in the name of the Board of Directors, I close by thanking all the present and wishing everyone, especially our graduates, a memorable evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Howell. At this time, I would like to introduce the student class speaker from the Baja campus, Pedro Mirbaum. How can one build traditions in a new school? This question haunted the class of 2023 at Baja from the moment we were declared seniors. Under normal conditions, new seniors tend to follow in the footsteps of their predecessors, performing the same rules, same rituals, abiding to, by the class dynamics that had already been imposed by decades. This wasn't our case. Our class found itself on a blank canvas, having to create our own footsteps, invent our own dynamics, and develop our own rituals. We found ourselves in a constant struggle to define what it meant to be a senior and under the constant threat of simply copying what Gavia was doing. Like a new country, creating a national identity seemed unfeasible. This challenge is accentuated when you have a class of 25 people, a class not large enough to reenact a play of High School Musical and yet just large enough to never reach a consensus on any major decisions. We know better than anyone how frustrating it is to receive a Google form with options for senior hoodies on a weekly basis. Looking back, not only on this past year, but in the five years I have studied in the school, this class has had an integral role in creating the sense of community at EJ Baja. While seniors passed down clubs to juniors in other places, Bebella was barely, a, was barely a sophomore, already leading SOS and taking on the role of cheer captain. While our peers felt anxious to be receiving the title freshman in 2019, we were already entitled juniors and had to stay with this role for four years. The novelty in our pioneering was so impactful that Daniela was the first person in any American school to be inducted into the NHS as a ninth grader. As we watched the sun rise on a senior sleepover this Tuesday, I realized that we had success in the daunting task of being the first few seniors. Despite Rebecca's constant trip to the senior lounge for a mid-math class nap, Tommy's unproductive questions in econ, and even Paiva and Tiela's infamous Jovens Marombas Insta accounts, we certainly have created an image of ourselves that will stay with this campus for the years to come. A healthy mixture of academic efforts, camaraderie, and humor that will be greatly missed by all, but especially by Ms. Cavalcante. As Arthur screams, group hug on the rooftop, it became clear that the years and years that built up to this moment would have been dreadful if it weren't for this group of people. 
I remember at the end of junior year when we had to deliver English IOs, our first big IV assignment, the sheer panic that was created, and in the moments of anxiety, uncertainty, and confusion, our class came together to offer each other support, and through multiple passive-aggressive emails, we made our voices heard. Likewise, last month, while Duda called DIV to receive answers on the hijacked papers, we united to bring comfort to each other and to make sense of the situation as a group. To be able to unite in the moments of crisis is a skill that has become scarce, and it's delightful to see how this class has cultivated such so brilliantly, despite all other personal conflicts. In a few years, we will look back at our high school experience and laugh at the bitter moments, such as the BSS debate between Giovanna and I, Sharon's Halloween party monologue, and even Sam's ovary accident. We will miss Amanda's contagious laugh, Joanna's awkward group pictures, Jam and Victor's unfiltered jokes, and perhaps even Eduardo and Maddie's constant bragging. <laughs> I won't say our class is a family, because that would entail a high degree of incest, but I can confidently claim that despite all the challenges, the class of 2023 at Baja was able to define what it means to be a senior at this school and create our own class culture in our own terms. And for that, I am proud to be a part of this community. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. And now the class speaker from the Gavia campus, Christian Ituri. Good evening, teachers, students, faculty members, and seniors, ERJ class of 2023, soon to be high school graduates. I wanted to begin my speech tonight with a brief anecdote, the telling of one of my first days at ERJ. I'll set the stage and let your minds fill in the rest, but it essentially goes as follows. Imagine an awkward, lanky, pasty 12-year-old boy aimlessly walking around block five trying to get to his seventh grade English class. He flinches when someone taps him on the shoulder and winces at the thought of having to ask for a cookie at the snack shack in Portuguese. This was the state of mind that essentially dictated my first few weeks here in Gavia. And while I don't remember much from those days of constant fear and dread, Something that has always stayed with me has been the embracing nature with which I was greeted by my peers. I can distinctly recall the way that Alex introduced himself to me, extending his right arm outward before giving me a slight smirk and saying hi. I remember Tiago and Wilka walking me to the cafeteria, gushing about how good the barbecue sauce was and asking me if I could pronounce Zhuong. Even now, some six years later, I can still describe how Juju and Bibi perfectly convinced me that Justin Bieber was their first cousin in the back of the Sankohad Baha school bus. I remember these moments fondly, but in hindsight, recognize that they were merely threads in a larger, more beautiful tapestry than I could have ever imagined. These isolated memories are a testament to the continued affection and love with which I have felt greeted with during my time at ERJ. And these displays have been furthered and perhaps made possible but that by the diversity of my peers. Notwithstanding the socioeconomic boundaries that we have overcome to study at a school like ERJ, there's something truly quaint and special about the composition of the class of 2023. I look around me tonight and see a cohort of some of the most talented people I know. I see artists, future illustrators and architects. I see doctors, nurses, and general practitioners who I will definitely be trying to get free consultations from in years to come. I see economists, businessmen and businesswomen, politicians. Above all, I see determination and grit. And to that point, I don't know that there's anything more emblematic of our year group than those two words, grit and determination. There are many things that can be said about the Gavia seniors, but none ring more true or closer to home than the fact that when we set our mind to do something, we almost always follow through. Admittedly, the things we collectively deem worthy of pursuing are few and far between. But on the off chance that we do go all the way, we really go all the way. In senior sunsets or freshman haze weeks, we have shown time and time again the consequences of working together toward a common goal. It is because of this mentality and because of these results that I can say with full conviction that my classmates are off to do incredible things. But it takes a village to move a mountain, and our greatest source of fuel and motivation throughout the years have undoubtedly been the brilliant educators and teachers who have dedicated their time and energy to us the students. I don't think I'm alone in saying that it is you, our teachers, that I will miss most about the school. Thank you for your office hours, your commitment, 
Thank you for listening and thank you for being there always. We will never forget you or the lessons you have taught us both inside and outside the classroom, whether through Ana Melo's unofficial art therapy sessions or Ana Vanier's reminders to focar na tarefa. You are a piece of the school that will always, always stay with us. Thank you. <laughs> lastly, <laughs> lastly, I wanted to finish with a quote from one of my favorite songs entitled The Circle Game by Joni Mitchell. Mitchell wrote The Circle Game when she was only 23, and yet the song reads like the reflections of a person three times that age. In it, she says the following, and the seasons, they go round and round, and the painted ponies go up and down. We're captive on a carousel of time. We can't return, we can only look behind from where we came and go round and round and round in the circle game. Joni likens the passage of time to a carousel ride, but it is her advice in the chorus's last line that always gets to me. We can't return, we can only look behind from where we came. Seniors, there's very little I can impose on you that you don't already know. So instead, I ask you to listen to the words of Joni Mitchell. We must make the most of the time we have now and treasure it. The future is scary and the circle game will continue to go around. But rather than dread the mistakes of the past, I ask you to reflect on them and take these moments with you for the future. I'm so beautifully excited to see what comes next, and I am forever grateful for the opportunities you have all given me. Thank you for giving me the chance to exhibit the purest form of unconditional love I have ever known. Congratulations, and I love you all forever. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Christian, for giving me one heck of an act to follow. This evening, it gives me great pleasure to make two awards as we honor the class of 2023. The Head of School Cup is awarded to two students from the graduating class who, through diligent effort, have successfully worked to improve their performance in academics, sports, and school activities. And who, because of this diligence, can honestly be said to have attained the current peak of their potential. This year's recipients are both exceptionally high achieving students who have never sacrificed their all round commitment to school life. They are students of grit, integrity, authenticity, and grace. They've not been afraid to set out on new paths, to innovate, or to take on leadership. Their paths have not always been easy, but high achievement seldom is. They've shown that you can have a high level of academic achievement and also be committed to athletics, the arts, and to a wide range of school activities. In the case of one of tonight's recipients, her contributions to school life include the following. Try and keep up. President of the National Honor Society, past president of the Environmental Club, a valued member of the varsity basketball and varsity volleyball teams, and member of the Athletic Council. Her college acceptances include Florida International University, the University of Miami, York University, and the University of Calgary. And she'll be attending the University of Toronto in the fall. In the case of the second recipient of the Headmaster's Cup, or rather the Head of Schools Cup, this person's contributions to school life have been equally diverse and impressive. President of the Student Council, a member of the National Honor Society, founder of the EARJ Film Club, an active and committed delegate, journalist, passionate debater in Model United Nations, including leadership roles as Brahman Chair, Press Corps Director and Board Member, captain of the Asby Knowledge Bowl gold medal winning team, a member of the victorious EARJ Varsity Volleyball team, which won this year's Final Four national title. Can we hear it from everybody for that, please? His college acceptances include Emerson College, Chapman University, 
and he'll be attending Dartmouth College in the fall. The 2023 Head of School Cups go to Daniela Bolton-Skinner and Christian Ittery. Thank you. Now it's a tradition at EARJ that the graduating class select two faculty speakers to share their thoughts as part of the ceremony. Could you please join me in welcoming to the stage the first of our faculty speakers, Mr. Gregory Sitch from the Baja campus. Hello. Okay, I can't use uh, some of the jokes I used last year, so um, I'm just going to start my 10-minute timer to make sure that at max 10 minutes. So here we go. That was a joke, by the way. Uh, so, but uh, very honestly, I can't do as many name checks and call-outs that I did last year uh, because there's just uh, far too much, but I want to thank Pedro Mirbaum for doing that for me, including a typically inappropriate joke, so thank you, Pedro. Um, yeah, if I, if I spent some time up here telling you various anecdotes, uh, Dr. Nigel would have to pull me off the stage. Uh, you know, I don't want to give him that pleasure. Um, so I'll let you know individually tomorrow night how much you all mean to me over the past five years. Um, so yeah, five years. Class of 2022, it's like the older child, right? It's the one that's very serious, the one you put all the expectations on. Um, then you've got that scrappy younger child, right? The younger sibling I'm talking about. The one, the one that says, hey, look at me over here. The one with snark, the one with charm, the one with a little bit of too much character. Um, so again, so this should be easy. I was here last year, no problem, easy. Blank page, it's not actually blank. Um, so I'll speak to you now, this is awkward. Uh, they're going to tell you, we tell you, we've told you, don't worry, gets easier. All right? Life gets easier. School gets easier. Work gets easier. Love gets easier. All right? That's what we tell you. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie we tell ourselves, and it's a lie we tell you, our students and our children. It doesn't get easier. But it can. It can get easier when you don't care. When you don't care, whew, things can be so easy. But if you care, you'll always be challenged. And if I didn't care, my advisory will tell you, well, they'll tell you how often I came every semester, every year, for five years and said, hey, I'm going to be cool this time. Right? I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to get frustrated. Was I successful? No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, because if I didn't care, well, I'm supposed to have my water bottle now. If I didn't care uh, so much about you, then this would be easy. Done this before, no problem. So easy. Uh, this is one of the hardest speeches I've ever written. It's one of the hardest speeches I've ever had to start. So I'm almost ready to start. Let's see how I'm doing for time. Perfect. Uh, so last year I, I joked with the grads. I said, hey, I've been, this speech was easy. I've been writing it for four years. It applies to you too. I've been writing this for five. But when it came time to write it, blank. It's not blank. You'll wish it was. Okay, saying goodbye does not get easier. I'll tell you that from a lot of experience. Life does not get easier, but it shouldn't. Ever. That would be boring. 
And as I start off every year in every class, I tell you and I've told you the greatest crime that you can ever commit is to be boring. And I know, I know each one of you and I know you'll never commit that crime and you haven't. And I'm so proud of you for that. Uh, so anyway, as I start off every year, sorry, back up. <laughs> what I wanted to say is that now you have agency. We've talked about that this year. You're going to have to clean your own sheets. Miss B helped you with that a little bit. You're going to have to make your own miojo or moyo noodles. I, I've never been able to pronounce that. You're going to have to save your own money. And I worry that I have failed some of my economic students in that regard. Apologies in advance. So, no, this will not be easier. And believe me, next year will not be easier. So now I will pause for dramatic effect. So what should it do? It should get better. Uh, that's what we should tell you. Hey, it's going to get better. And my friends, it gets better. Five years, I get to be here with you. What could be better than this? You talk too much. You talked back too much. You challenged us sometimes too much. But you made me better. You made us better. In one of my less calm moments, this is the only anecdote, I promise, I had a very difficult conversation with this group. And I've had many, because it's our duty as educators to have those hard conversations, to challenge you so that you challenge us back. You did a good job. So one challenging day, I told this group, you're being rude. You're being disrespectful. And I may have used slightly more colorful language, not appropriate for a speech, but that's what I said. But I ended the lecture with two words that hopefully you remember. Is anyone brave enough? Thank you. Would you say, Duda? Be better. Be better. But now it's your turn. I want you to look out there. Those are your parents, your teachers, your family. Now it's your turn to hold us to account. You need to tell us, be better. This is now your life to create, and I've said this to you a lot over the last couple of days in different ways. Do not accept cliches. Do not accept it is what it is. What a terrible, terrible phrase that is. Do not accept answers that are pat, that are unsupported. Look at those people and say, be better. No, by virtue of this diploma, you get to say that to us now. You get to say that to me. Is anyone brave enough? Thank you. OK, so that was it. Uh, you know, that wrote itself. Uh, then, it, then I got to the end. Uh, and I thought, how do I end this? How, how do I take all of this experience and all of this love and finish it up? And I couldn't. There's the water bottle. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to end this. Uh, instead, I'm just going to let you all know that you are leaving this place with a, with a little piece of my tiny, hard, cold heart, OK? A lot of my respect, and hopefully a bit of my sense of humor. So Tommy, that was a joke. You can laugh. All right. I very much love you all, and I very much look forward to hearing about you over the next many years. Thank you very much. Eight minutes. Thank you, Greg, and enjoy that free bottle of water for your years of distinguished service. It's now my pleasure to introduce the faculty speaker from the Gavia campus, Ms. Simone Guillerme. Oh my God. 
right. Now, Greg, what did you do? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna be more organized. Good evening, graduates, graduates, parents, STEAM colleagues, friends, school board, and administration members. It's an honor to be here tonight to deliver this commencement speech for this resilient and accomplished graduating class of 2023. It is with great joy and pride that I stand before you as a teacher and speaker. This is a very special class to me. I have taught practically everyone in the class, and many of them have been my student for their whole high school years here at the Gavia campus. I would like to thank them for the invitation. The last time I delivered a commencement speech was 10 years ago. Okay, no, no age. My goodness. So much has happened in the world since then, and so much has happened in my life. I change as a person, as a parent, as an educator. But one thing I've realized that did not change much is how nervous I still feel to speak in public at such an important event. People think that teachers feel good at speaking in public. That's not true. <laughs> I'm not that comfortable, but anyway. So people might not believe me because I talk a lot. They know I talk a lot, but I try not to, you know, I'll promise not to talk too much this time. So first I'd like to congratulate you. You have reached a significant milestone in your life that marks the culmination of years of hard work, determination, and growth. It is the end of a remarkable journey and the beginning of an even more extraordinary adventure. You accomplished so much. Students, you have completed an important part of your education, which is the base for all that will come. Parents, you have provided your children with the best opportunities to construct a solid base for all that will come. Both of you feel proud for having completed this task successfully. However, it's essential to acknowledge that your achievements were no solely a result of your own efforts. Behind every successful graduate, there are countless mentors, teachers, and support systems who have nurtured and guided you along the way. To the dedicated teachers and faculty members who have committed their time, knowledge, and unwavering belief in our students, I salute you. Your passion for education and your commitment to the growth and well-being of these young minds have made a profound impact on their lives. Graduates, take a moment to express your heartfelt gratitude to all these people. As I mentioned, I have taught practically every student in this class from the Gavir camps, and many have been my student for four consecutive years. I can say I know pretty well the majority of them, and I wish I had the time to mention something unique and personal about each one. Throughout our time together, we faced countless challenges, and for sure the biggest one was having to deal with the uncertainties of remote learning during the pandemic. This experience has undoubtedly left its mark on us. But we must recognize that these trials have also equipped us, and especially you graduates, with invaluable life lessons on adaptability, flexibility, and resilience in the face of adversity. We have witnessed firsthand the impact of a global crisis and the strength that lies within us to overcome it. My hope is that you make good use of these life lessons to shape the future, create positive change, and be catalysts for the resilience and growth. I can also say I learned a lot from this class, which to me is one of the biggest advantages of being a teacher, the possibility of learning something new every day from your students. But we have to be open-minded to accept that a teenager can teach us valuable lessons about life and more importantly, about technology. What would be of me without them during remote teaching and hybrid lessons? Thank God there was always a gentle soul to help me when the mics or cameras did not work. Né, Gabriel Vaz? Welcome. And the list goes on. They are very generous people. I also learned a lot about the new trends, new slang, the popular Netflix series, the popular artists, which as parents, a parent as well, I have to admit, it's hard to keep up. These exchanges were as rich and rewarding as many of our lessons because from it we connected 
In it, we share our perceptions of the world. Thanks to it, we bond. There is a well-known phrase about our profession that I think summarizes the aim of every educator. It says, I touch the future, I teach. What do I see when I look at this class? I see creativity, passion for life, generosity, tenderness, and compassion. But I also see many of you being ambitious, communicative, outspoken, competitive, driven, inquisitive, funny, and very, very affectionate. This class has shown me a lot of affection in good and hard times. It was thanks to this affection that I coped with a serious health issue. Their concern and love were an important part of my recovery process. Thank you, guys. I love you. <laughs> so graduates, as you embark on this new chapter, remember that learning is a lifelong journey. Embrace the unknown with courage and curiosity. Do not follow your dreams. Take them with you wherever you go. And more importantly, aim at having a positive impact on the world around you. Think collectively more often than you are accustomed to and fight for a more equitable society. One in which each person, independently of their race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, or socioeconomic status is recognized and has inherent dignity and worth. Treat every individual we encounter with fairness and respect, regardless of their background or circumstance. It is not an easy task. It requires courage, empathy, and action, but I believe you all have the ability to do it. The world eagerly awaits your contributions, your ideas, and your passion. And finally, keep in mind two things about life that took me a while to learn. Do not take yourself too seriously. Be able to laugh about your mistakes. Second, and I have said that to many of our students, do not worry about what people think of you. No matter what you do to please someone, you cannot control their thoughts and what they think of you. So do not worry, be happy. Once more, I would like to thank you for the respect, the care, and the affection you have given me all these years we spent together at ERJ. Thank you for giving me the great honor to be your commencement speaker. I wish all of you all the luck and success in your next journey. And to close, I will repeat here what I said in my last two speeches, because I love this quote. And I think it really reflects this moment of your lives. To the caterpillar, the metamorphosis is the end, but to the butterfly, it's just the beginning. Fly butterflies. Simone, thank you for your, your wonderful words and uh, in the sake of or in the name of equity and in recognition of your uh, many years of service, I've got a, a bottle of water for you as well that I'll present to you at the reception. It's now my pleasure uh, and an honor to offer my principal's remarks to the graduates. Uh, I'm filled with immense uh, pride and joy for every one of you this evening. Throughout your journey at EARJ, We've strived to ignite a flame of determination, excellence, and purpose within you. Today, we all stand witness to the extraordinary results of our collective efforts, faculty, peers, and parents alike. From the very beginning, our mission has been to provide you with a world-class education that transcends textbooks and exams. We have aimed to develop in you the highest level of creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and an unwavering confidence to lead. You are all leaders, and you are our future. And today, as I look upon the graduating class, I can say with the utmost uh, certainty that we have succeeded in our mission. You, the class of 2023, have embraced our mission, our vision, and our values wholeheartedly. You've not only pursued your interests but also exhibited an unwavering commitment to academic uh, achievement, combined with uh, active participation in ex extracurricular activities and service learning. And this sets you apart from all others. As a testament to your remarkable achievements, 
as, as mentioned by Mr. Uh, Howell in his uh, opening comments, you've been accepted uh, into institutions of higher learning around the world. This accomplishment is not only recognition of the exceptional academic achievement uh, that you have, uh, uh, have done, but also speaks to your character and your ability to make a positive impact on the world. Your acceptance in these renowned institutions uh, speaks volumes about your dedication, your perseverance, and the passion that you've demonstrated throughout your high school journey. As you embark on the next chapter of your lives, remember that you carry with you the immense potential to shape a better future. Embrace the challenge that lies ahead with confidence, knowing that you've been well prepared to face uh, any challenges head on. Class of 2023, I offer my most sincere congratulations to each and every one of you. Never forget the importance of staying true to yourself and to your passions. Strive for excellence in all that you do and do so for the profound sense of fulfillment that comes from knowing that you've given your best. Pursue your dreams with unwavering determination and those dreams will become a reality. Class of 20, 2023, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Scott, my colleague from the Baja campus. Dear class of 2023, I want to talk and look at the graduates. I always see uh, this opportunity to give a graduation speech as my last chance to impart some wisdom to you that I've learned over the years as my farewell to you. So I want to share a quote from the American author and humorist Mark Twain. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Think about that for a moment. The two most important days in your life, the day you're born and the day you find out why. For me, this captures the essence of how to live a purposeful and meaningful life. We talk at ERJ about finding your path, but I really want you to understand that as finding your purpose. And finding your purpose, finding out why you were born, is a lifelong pursuit. It's informed by your experiences, your talents, your DNA, your parents, but also your failures, your tragedies, your hurts. Why are you here? Is your purpose in life to graduate this evening? It's certainly an accomplishment for which you and we are all proud. But is that the reason you exist? I hope not. Because what would be left after tonight? Is your purpose to go to college, to study, to get into some field, to get a job? Those are all important pursuits, but is that why you exist? Now, sometimes to find the answer to difficult questions it's helpful to identify what the answer is not. Were you born to party, to feel good all the time, to just have fun, to play soccer, to make millions of dollars? While these things may be pleasurable or fulfilling, are they why you exist? I would say no. Were you born to make yourself feel better by making others feel worse? by being cruel to others, to be hateful, to be intolerant, to exclude or belittle others, to hurt others, to discriminate against others? Again, I, I would say no, that's not the reason you exist. So then how do you figure out why you were born? Well, that's your homework. That's your life's work. That is what you are to ask yourself, in my opinion, to lead a purposeful, and fulfilling life. Now in conclusion, I have some hints that I'll give you to help you determine why you were born. Number one, it's not about you. It's about something bigger than yourself. Number two, it's not about what you accomplish. It's about what you contribute. And finally, number three, it's not about what the world can give you. 
See, your life is the gift that the world has given you. And what you do with your life is the gift that you give to the world. Thank you. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce this year's Class of 2023 Valedictorian. The Valedictorian is selected based on the highest grade point average achieved at EARJ during grades 11 and 12. But this year's recipient is also an incredible all-around individual. Just this week, here in the Tartan, he was leading his class in their dance at Gymkhana on Monday. He was receiving multiple awards at both the academic awards ceremony and the athletic awards ceremony on Tuesday, and was the guest clarinetist performing with the upper school band last night at their musical performance in the auditorium. Tonight, please join me in welcoming valedictorian Tiago Rocha Nogueira. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty, dear parents, and my fellow graduating classmates. First and foremost, I want to say that it is an honor to be here speaking on behalf of the class of 2023 and representing the school that in so many ways made me the person that I am today. My story here, just as the story of a few others in this room, began as I walked through the Blue Gate entrance to the preschool building up on that hill. Others of us set foot in this journey more recently through the middle and high school, including those at the Baja campus. When I first visited that campus a decade ago in the so-called water day, some of you might remember, it was still Bahinha, and today it flourishes with so many kind and talented people, many of whom I've had the pleasure to meet. It is a privilege to be graduating alongside all of you. This moment for all of us carries a lot of mixed emotions. The exhilarating, the exhilaration of the start of a new chapter, and at the same time, the heartache of a tender goodbye. And in this time of conflicting emotions, I would like to take this opportunity to address them, our feelings. I'd like to bring you a quote by a member of the class of 2023, who shall remain anonymous. It reads as follows. Feelings are like a ball of strings. And in our youth, we are constantly trying to untangle the multicolored strings while the ball is simultaneously being played with by a kitten. Yes, you heard it right. A kitten inside your head playing with a ball of strings. I would imagine this describes the sensation of many of us in this room. This feeling of entanglement, of inner chaos, as if really we were set the task of stretching out a tangled ball of yarn while there's a cat disturbing us for no reason. And if we think about it, the kitten comes along any time we are faced with a challenging experience. As members of this class, we have faced a myriad of obstacles, all the way from speaking in public for a lower school show and tell, to writing an extended essay, to finding our place in the jungle of upper school, to accepting and embracing failure in all of its forms. Looking back, we all have come a long way in overcoming these challenges and ultimately learning how to better deal with, it, with our emotions, much like untangling a ball of strings. But more importantly, we must recognize the people who have helped us come this far. And so now, graduates, I'd like each of you to take a moment and look at the audience. Look around you. Look at those people who have been there for you as mentors, as friends, as educators, as role models, and as faithful supporters. In Isaac Newton's words, those are the giants over whom we stand who help us to see further and to reach further. 
And once the ceremony is over, I'd like you to go ahead and do something I imagine most of us, myself included, don't do nearly enough. Say thank you. Because what makes it possible for us to deal with the crazy kitten of our emotions is not how old or strong or intelligent we are, but those special people that are with us along the way. So, my dear class of 2023, here's my message to you. Whatever you are feeling right now, don't hold it back. Embrace those emotions. Share them with your friends and family and really appreciate this moment as we all untangle this ball of strings together. Thank you. Tiago, thank you for those wonderful world, uh, words. Uh, this evening, we've had an opportunity to, to look forward. We've had an opportunity to look back, and we've reflected. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to honor our graduates with the presentations of the diplomas. So to help me with that, I'd ask Dr. Howard Delow, our Brazilian director, Ms. Claudia Ventura, and our athletics director, Ms. Claudia Araya, to come to the stage to assist in the announcing of the graduates by Ms. Claudia Araya and the presentation of the uh, American and Brazilian diplomas by Dr. Delow, Ms. Claudia Ventura, and myself. Here we go. Alejandra Gil Sousa. Alex Hegler Scher. Amanda Kagi Nigri. Anuki Curry Oliveira Fontana. Artur Dutra Strushner. Asha Dimitriev Wiratnanto. Ajisha Alejandra Valen Lopez. Cayo Monteiro de Carvalho Hegler. Christian Iturri. Daniel Moise Jadid. Daniela Alejandra Bolton Skinner. Diogo Holfs Villar. Eduardo Martín Rengifo Ventes. Enzo Falla Guerrieri de Castro. Esther Caroline Cardoso Alves. Gabriel Badoe Strickland Faro. Gabriel de Lima Tetamanchi.
Gabriel Moreno Tielas. Gabriel Neves Dominguez Vaz. Gabriela Piñeiro de Viana Bandeira. Germano Johan Peter Nabucco. Giovanna Laranjeira Panici da Silva. Hugo Domínguez Guarido. Ido Gonen. Isabela de Matos Silero. Isabel Vassimon Gelman. Jing Chao Wang. Joana Tavares Maya. João Marcos de Moraes Costa Santos. João Pedro Vernecki Melete de Oliveira. John Edward Mercado. Julia Novaes do Carmo. Julia Pinheiro de Viana Bandeira. Lara Tienfenthaler Trianta Filidis. Laura Inés Linardi. Lauren Duarte Pascual. Leonardo Axel Viana Lundgren. Leticia Lenz Cesar Mariani Lacerda. Leticia Pedroso do Guimarães Bonjem. Loisanne Loafman. Lorenzo de Oliveira Biscardi. Lusalma Gaia Durans. Luani Ye Wang. Lucas Gomez Frota. Luisa da Costa Carvalho Melo. Magnus Monstan Tavaroen.
Manuela Hashiopi Esteves. Manuela Pesego Haim. Maria Eduarda McLeod. Maria Isabel Carneiro da Rocha Crepon. Mariana Scovino Bajos Cardoso. Nicole McGrath Santos. Nicole Oliveira Gomez Eufrasio. Nina Rosa Monteiro de Carvalho. Nina Santa Rosa Garcia Machado. Ali Theodore Prize Amlid. Paloma Gatil Geraldi. Pedro Calado Chipaiva. Pedro Henrique Cario Mirbon. Rafael Sangpeng Wu. <laughs> Rebecca Garcia Nether Fernandez. <laughs> Rebecca Salter. Rebecca Tubino Scaramboni. Samantha Schmidt Martinez. Samuel Dalmas Torino. Sharon Ortiz de la Peña Castellot. <laughs> Sofia Charchet Fishman. <laughs> Chago Rocha Nogueira. Tomás Maro Salafia. Tomás Souto de Faria. Vicente Esponqueado Morgado. Victor Martorelli Andrade de Oliveira.
This is the big exciting bit. You all ready? <clears throat> As head of school of the American School of Rio de Janeiro, and by the powers vested in me by the Board of Directors, I hereby declare the EARJ Senior Class of 2023 High School Graduates. You may move your tassels from right to left. Hold on to those hats. Get ready. Congratulations. Exit to the back of the tartan. Thank you. It's 